Wow, so it's the day after I got back from Le Mans and we're here at Donington and we're gonna go for a track day. It is a track day with uh, Jimmy Rawrent's lot. In fact, there is one scuffed Supra. So we just switched the GR back over onto the stock wheels and tires. So the uh, used uh, Pilot 4S's. And the reason why it was on the way home from Le Mans, we actually picked up a bit of a vibration and uh, you get it at about over 65 miles an hour. So we need to investigate that, but I don't have the time to do that this morning. So we're just gonna switch over the tires and run it how it is. I think we'll go out, it's red flag at the moment, so we'll go out and uh, get some exploratory lights, take it easy to start with. So as you go out onto the track for your first warm-up lap slash outlap, uh, you really just want to get things up to temperature, make sure everything's good, but also get to know the track a little bit. Uh, this is my first time on Donington and Donington at speed. Immediately got overtaken by Jimmy Broadbent, as you can see there in the Supra, and straight away I knew that uh, we're going to have to pick up some speed uh, fairly swiftly, as I don't want to be a roadblock in the middle of the road. The car is pretty warm already, because there's a long drive, so let's pick up the speed and see where this car lies on the circuit of Darlington. Coming up to Matthew here in the Red McGann, big shout out to him, as uh, he let me borrow a couple of tools that I was short of. So coming up here, I have to say sorry. Um, I left the stickers on the windshield and by naivety with track days, I didn't get the best camera angles possible and that's something I will do in the future. We come up behind another GR Yaris owner. At this point, I decided to stay behind them as in the br driver briefing, they explained that you could only pass on the straight. So I was just gonna sit behind them and assess, maybe look at what kind of speed they carry through the corners as this is my first real push lap around Donington and I don't know where the limits is oh, and I'm just hoping the person in front knows the limits better than I do so if I can keep up with them then I know that I'm within the limits. Now we come up to something scary. So in my eagerness to get out on track, I didn't turn off the collision avoidance. And coming up into this corner here, uh, we brake, and then the car starts braking for us, and it slows us right down. There's nothing we could do to change that. It wouldn't accelerate. The brake pedal literally left the bottom of my foot. And um, unfortunately, I caused a bit of a panic moment for Matt behind us in the red McGann, so I'm really sorry for that. And as you can see, going down here, I'm trying to eagerly turn it off and get rid of all those kind of warning messages so we can enjoy our lap times. Coming to the main straight we can pass GR fun and then start exploring a bit of the lap so uh, at this point I'm trying to find out what kind of gears to expect in these corners, uh, see where the tyres are. Bear in mind at this point I'm on Michelin Pilot 4S's that have done over 14,000 miles at the default tyre pressure so just seeing where we're at. I know down here is quite sketchy, it can liven up the rear and we can definitely see through this lap as things are fully up to speed or temperature. Coming through here you can see I'm not really pushing it, I'm not using all the track and then we get a little bit of a slide on just here. did go for third gear but I think it was a little bit too late and I was trying to brake turn and change gear at the same time and just livened up the rear end, rear end came round but nothing we couldn't control. Now I'm going to try and catch up to Jimmy's Supra, I think he's on a cool down lap so we can put a uh, move around on that Supra and a beep. Here on lap three we picked up a little bit of traffic as you can see there's a bit of a gaggle of cars up ahead so this just allowed me just to take some time maybe look up the, my line better and then slowly pick our way through we don't want to be too aggressive as there are people from all different skill bases and car performance so we just want to take our time through this
at this point I really don't mind a little bit of traffic this is as you can see top right hand corner my third and fourth lap around Donington so I'm happy to just sit behind people and just practice and work on my line see what kind of lines other people are taking what kind of lines unsettle the car even at a lower speed and then work our way out from there At this point I feel like I can go faster than the MX-5 ahead but I'm worried about the track obsession car there, it's a rental and I don't want to cause any panic there. Also coming up here you want to make sure you don't squeeze them against the apex so that means you are a lot wider than normal and that causes a little bit of understeer and less grip because you are not where you should be normally on the racing line. But now we're free we can pick up the pace. Now we go out for the second session that we was going to do today and I'm going to go out with Chris Young and his Clio, basically a Clio Cup car. Um, at this point he's on track day tyres and we're going to follow him around and as you can see he lets us pass so then I think right this is my time to push as hard as possible, well not as hard as possible but push and see how long we can stay ahead of Chris uh, even with some of this traffic so we're going to start doing a few more push laps now. I know Chris is a fast driver and he has a fast car so I thought I best just try and do some nice clean safe fast laps and try and explore a bit more of where this car's at. We've dropped the PSI down a bit I think uh, after the hot temperatures of the first session I think I dropped about 5 PSI on each corner so we've got a little bit more squish in the tyre 
and we're going to just try and push it a little bit more and then when Chris inevitably does come past us we're going to see from first hand what kind of difference between a modified GR Yaris and a heavily modified clear 200 is. I hope you can see from this footage but you can see the GR Yaris is a competent track day machine and I was catching pretty much most things you can see here I'm just giving a little bit of caution as it does have the X on the back so we know they are an amateur and I just don't want to put any pressure and put myself somewhere they're not expecting. up to a different Clio 200 uh, this one with gold wheels so we know the potential of this kind of car as we used to own one so we're just trying to weigh it up and it looks like they're letting us pass as we go through the rest of the lap we actually catch up to Minty just here so Minty uh, is Jimmy Broadbent's mint coloured MX-5 um, we're just going to peel off into the pits as we go by. So we had a good few laps of just enjoying the track and if you want to see this completely unedited in whole just let us know in the comments and I can post that up. But now we're on to lap 5, Chris is starting the catch and he is just behind us. So what we're going to do, we're going to flip to his camera which he's graciously sent over to us and we'll see how he catches and passes us around Donington. So the corners that I'm most worried about is dunking it off the track. So we're tucking behind Chris and it's clear and we know we're not going to have the cornering or the commitment that Chris has in his car. Uh, but hopefully the straights where we've got a little bit of extra power on the four wheel drive we can see if we can catch up. You can hear as we went through turn one I was trying to keep up and there was a lot of tyre squeal. Now one thing I found about the GR Yaris is in turn one it really responded well to trail braking. If you braked and then came off the brakes and then tried to coast it through you found a lot of understeer would start to generate. The best thing to do was carry the brake at the minimum all the way into the apex and then power out. Now coming up here we can see we can again catch to Chris a little bit and then we lose out as we come up over this uh, rise a little bit. stay on his bumper so coming down in the, to the chicane you can see after that long straight we've caught up a good few car lengths and then powering out of here we should be able to catch him up a bit more Again you can hear quite a bit of tyre squeal from the tyres, we was in track mode the whole day 
here, so I felt that was the best, most neutral. Now, coming down here through the crane curbs, this was something that I felt quite uh, uneasy about. So you can see I lift off and there's a little bit of oversteer just there. As we're just trying to stay with Chris, I know he's going to be in a fast car and a fast driver and he will pull away, but I was thinking if I can try and copy his lines, look at where he's going. And I did notice down into the old hairpin, he was a lot more to the left than I was. So that's it, I tried to emulate in further laps. We are starting to push the car now and allow it to move around a little bit more. As you can see from the steering wheel inputs there, we've got a little bit of rear end rotation to help us into that top corner. And then again, down this back straight, we can see we are catching up on the Clio ahead. day was really hot I think it was a 34 35 degree centigrade day but the Yaris really performed well the brakes were strong and solid the whole day long um, I didn't have any issues with uh, diff temperatures or oil temperatures um, the tune kept good consistent power I felt like I could catch on most things around here in the straight lines other than things that were hundreds of horsepower more powerful than what I had Coming down the crane curves here, I've seen that Chris stayed closer to the left this time, so that's what I tried to do this lap round. And as you can see, I'm a lot closer to the white line than I was on the previous lap. And we leave it in fourth gear and use the torque of that three cylinder engine up the hill. So you can see by lap nine, Chris has managed to pull way ahead of us, and we're now giving way to a Ferrari Challenge car, uh, which was insane to see on track and nice to see off track as well. I'm going to leave lap 10 here in its entirety just so you can see where we was at on track I'm trying to be nice and smooth and consistent around the track and smoothness was my key here So after lunch, Chris stuck on some slicks onto his Clio Cup car and we got to sit and enjoy an amazing ride round in this thing. Once these things were up to temperature, this thing was absolutely hooting. The speed that the car took out of some of these corners and into these corners was absolutely insane.
started to be warmed up, you can see just how much pace Chris can take. And I think it caught out quite a few drivers. I didn't expect this clear to be that quick for a corner. Um, but I love the way he always said thank you to every single driver he went past. Um, the fact that he took that time to take his hands off the steering wheel and say thank you, I thought it was very nice. A few things that I picked up is you can see how much more committed he is down into this old hairpin. He can get on the power so much earlier and he's all over that green Astro turf on the in inside and apex. And coming up here, this is something that I wasn't able to do with my GI Yaris. He's, he's completely flat through this first left here and then gets onto the brakes and onto the throttle so early, pulls it the car through and the car just goes. And up into this corner, he was turning in and it accelerated before you could actually see the apex. And across there, that was absolutely nuts. You can see me shaking my head in just pure disbelief. Now coming into turn one you can see how he uses all of the pit lane exit and then as he gets on the brake the rear of the car starts steering into the corner for him and he just uses that to carry so much more momentum through turn one it's just absolutely fantastic to watch. I think this is the fastest lap that we caught with uh, traffic, I think his optimal was even better than this. I'll let you just sit back and enjoy it, turn it on, and listen to that little four cylinder from Renault screen. I hope you enjoyed that, and I certainly did in the passenger seat. Now we're going to follow on to the next lap where then issues start to happen, as we can say. Coming near to the end of the lap where we've had quite a bit of traffic, so we're going to wind up for a fast lap. We come to the chicane at the end of the lap, and the brakes stop working. She's always had me in a very fast car. So, go, go and drop Chris a like and a follow because that was intense. Wow, just been out on Chris Young's Clio on slicks. Wow! Um, do can pedal. Uh, that, the grip of that is absolutely nuts. He's braking so light and you can literally feel the rear of the car steering it. So, getting on the brakes, front, front's waiting up. Rear stepping out, but stepping out, ready to turn into the corner. Uh, just aiding in the cornering. 
turning in, um, last corner before the double right hander before the back straight. So late on the brakes and then just commits to the apex. It hopefully, you can send me a bit of that footage because I can share it with you guys. But that was intense. So, yeah, like I say, we go um, start off how you've been and then I'll just give you as many pointers and guidance as I can do, okay? Okay. At three o'clock, we went for some free tuition with Senan Fielding. So who is Senan Fielding? So he had actually come back from racing at Le Mans in the Road to Le Mans Championship. And as you can see here, the guy knows how to drive around Donington. So we were in some good hands and I was looking forward to this. So initially Senen just gave us some little tippets, uh, watched what we was doing, saw where we were strong, where we wasn't. There he was giving me a compliment that I was very smooth, which I was really happy with. Um, I always felt like I was quite a smooth driver. Again, him telling me here, try and get over to the left as much as possible. You can see I'm a lot more to the left than I was in the first few sessions. trying to get me to really commit to this last top corner here which is something that I definitely struggled with and Chris was a lot better uh, and I was focusing so much that I actually hit the limiter at this point. This was another area of opportunity that Senan had spotted where I was braking too hard into the La Chicane and going too deep and should have been focusing more on the exit, so that's something I tried to put into practice now. Down here, we caught quite a bit of traffic, but I wasn't quite sure what the guys and girls were doing ahead, so I thought it best just to be cautious, especially with somebody else in the car. I think it's one thing taking a risk with your own life, but putting other people's life at that risk is a bit different, and I think Senan picked that up and was happy that we just decided to just let's see what's happening first. Now we let the Audi TT through, we can try and put some of the tuition into practice. So I was trying to trail break as much as possible into turn one, try and stay left as much as possible into the old hairpin, and then try and commit to that very final corner, and also in the chicane, break early and focus on the exit. All the things that Senin had told me through. There again, a compliment on the smoothness of my driving and focusing on this exit here. I was a little bit late into that first apex, so that makes sense and it just stopped me from getting the best exit out onto here.
So just been out with Centerfield in, in the car. Um, a couple of tutorial laps, really helpful, kind of let me do my thing in the car initially. And then uh, start giving a few tips here and then. Um, stuff that I, I picked up straight away, kind of um, saying about just more focusing on the exit, especially at the slope of Kane. Uh, talking about maybe trail braking a bit more, which is something I noticed on the previous session, like when I trail braked, I got a lot better turning and uh, less of a steer. And if I braked and then just came off it too, too aggressively, um, induced a lot of understeer. So uh, spot on, uh, really helpful. Um, so yeah, that's, um, I've done three quarters of the tank of fuel, so we're running low, so we'll have to see what we'll do next. Next up, Dom, who's a fellow GR Yaris owner and had seen some of my videos approach me and wanted to go out on track together. So we thought, you know what, in the next session, we'll go out together and see what we can do and uh, try and get some footage of each other's cars. So really good fun. So on the out lap, I tried to uh, focus on uh, sticking with Dom here initially and seeing if we could get some good footage. Unfortunately not knowing that that big Le Mans sticker was pretty much covering up a lot of the footage. So as I said at the start of the video, that is something that I will sort for next time we go uh, for a track day. So this was also handy to just to compare uh, a different driver in a similar sort of car, see where they maybe take a different line, or were faster, were slower, and get an idea of uh, where you're doing well and maybe where you're not doing so well. After a lap or so, we actually caught up with another GR Yaris. I believe that's GR Yaris Fun at the front, and I think Matt um, in his Yaris was not too far behind us at this point as well. we came down the main start finish straight we managed to get a four in a line and a nice photo from the track photography here as we went on to lap two I decided to let Matt who's just behind me through and then see if we could keep up with him as he was again a very similar GI Yaris to mine but he was on uh, Nankang AR1s and Motegi Racing track light -like wheels. So as he goes, uh, we decide to follow through and we'll see if we can keep up with him and see what happens now. As you can see, Matt had a lot more grip going into this top corner here, could carry a lot more speed, 
onto the corner and out the corner whereas I was a little bit traction limited uh, but coming down the start finish straights and the back straight we did start to catch a little bit So coming down through the Krennic curves, you can see I just have a little lift there, just a confidence lift, and that definitely holds me up. You can see I don't carry as much speed through there, and then down through this old hairpin. But then when we get back on the power, it seems like we start to catch up to Matt a little bit on the upward hill section. After this I think Matt's oil temperatures started getting a little bit high so we went in and then I got back out with Dom um, here we can see he's just ahead of me so I follow him through this section and then when I overtake him he follows me so sit back and enjoy uh, thanks again to Dom for sharing his footage So we're back here, um, just gone out for a session with uh, Dom and we actually met the two other G YGR Yaris's who are here today and uh, had a good fun with them on track. 
uh, caught up with them, uh, had fun with Matt, uh, who you were seeing from some Tekken World videos. So um, really good fun with him. Um, enjoyed that thoroughly. This car is really good fun on track. Um, surprisingly, compared to on road, it is quite playful. It is playful in a safe manner. It's not playful in the kind of I'm going to kill you playful, like that crazy ex of yours, but it's kind of more playful as in come on, let's have fun together. The car is absolutely minging right now. There's grass from Le Mans in the back. There's, it's covered in debris, um, but it's done us proud. Uh, we have the vibration on this set of tires, and wheels of tires, so don't think it's a wheel of tire. It looks like it's set out, so we're gonna have to investigate that, and that's probably gonna be a story for another video. Things are starting to wind down here. Uh, we're gonna start packing up the car, and we'll head off home. We've used a full tank of fuel. Um, like if you did a good few sessions in a day, you're probably going through two tanks of fuel in this thing. So I think I've seen four MPG. So if anybody wants to know what kind of mileage you get on a track, it's between four to six. Um, you might get 10 after you slow down a uh, lap back to the pits. So uh, yeah, that's good fun. As always, if you enjoyed my content here on the channel, give it a thumbs up, give it a subscribe. That's really appreciated. We're trying to work our way forward to the next milestone. Uh, we've got plenty of content coming and we've had loads of great content just gone. So yeah, help, support is always appreciated. But also if you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs down. Just put in the comments down below how I can do it better. And until the next time, goodbye.